Whoa, that is so rockin'. That's Jamie Lydell, The City. Thanks again, Susan. That's pretty rockin' music. Um, my name's Katie Hogan. This is Live from the Heartland. Every Saturday morning, we sit up on the stage of the Heartland Cafe in Rogers Park, and we talk with people doing good things in the world or making change. Certainly true of the first two speakers we had today, Mike Quigley and Annie Day. Um, now we've got yet another wonderful hard working for the people person Miss Debbie why did I just do that Debbie, Debbie Hillman, Hillman. No, that's all right. holy smokers that's Debbie and I work together I just did a whole like we're getting old Katie oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh geez uh good I could I do this program so that I can you know and good I have all these notes right in front of me um, for the last 30 years, you've been an activist um, on gardening, uh, organic gardening, designing, installing, maintaining residential gardens. Um, all the while, you've been educating mm-hmm. folks about food and, you know, how why people should pay attention to weather, soil, all of these things. Right. And all of the, you know, you've sort of organically, if I may say so. Uh, evolved into a person who really provides essential and important leadership in an um, organizing sense of bringing us all together to actually make change. And can I just tell you, I, I really, I so uh, appreciate your work, Debbie, and and the fact that you have actually resulted. Uh, you know, what we're talking about right now will be the uh, Illinois Food Farm and Jobs Act of 2007. Now, those of you who listen regularly know that Debbie comes on once a semester sort of thing <laughs> to keep us posted on where uh, legally, where the legislatively uh, speaking, where this work is going, as well as on the ground organizing efforts. So tell us both of those things, but let's start about uh, filling people in on the Illinois Food Farm and Jobs Act of 2007, which are... Our local uh, state rep, Julie Hamos, was really uh, instrumental, helpful in helping us uh, put it together as well as getting it passed. Right. So. Thanks, Katie. Uh, yes, Julie was the chief sponsor of a bill called the Illinois Food Farms and Jobs Act of 2007. Uh, she made a big splash when she, as a progressive urban legislator, went to the Ag Committee for the first time in her legislative life. Uh, and everybody's eyebrows were raised, including hers. But uh, the bill passed unanimously in uh, June of 2007, uh, partly because there was no money in it. Um, But it created a task force uh, whose charge was to come up with a strategic plan to lay out uh, the things that need to be done to create a fully functioning local farm and food system in Illinois. Uh, In other words, I think most people in Illinois, and especially Chicago, know that we're an agricultural state, but what most people don't know is that most of the food that we eat on a daily basis that we buy at the grocery store is imported from outside of our own state. Mm -hmm. So even though we have the best prairie soils in the world, um, uh, we are only growing corn and soybeans, which are necessary crops, but the farmers... Um, uh, we could be we we could be growing much more in Illinois, and we could also be reaping the economic benefit of growing that food in Illinois and processing it and distributing it and selling it in in the communities. Um, and uh, this this bill is not only about supporting farmers and and training new farmers; it's also about Um, figuring out how to get all of the consumers in Illinois, uh, especially those in underserved communities, access to fresh, healthy, local foods. And this includes inner city food deserts, and this includes rural food deserts, uh, because people in rural areas have to drive 30 miles to a Walmart to get their groceries. Um, and half of the food in the Walmart comes from outside of the U.S.? Uh, China. Right. Uh, China, China. Yes. It's really, uh, it, it blows my mind that here we are in the, har- the heartland of America and mm. we, we cannot seem to feed ourselves somehow. Well, we could. We could. We could. And uh, what the point is, is that for the last 50 years, uh, primarily federal farm policy, um, as well as 
marketing and advertising and large corporations have convinced us that it's more efficient and more healthy for us to outsource our food production. Uh, and in, as, as many people are recognizing, um, there are problems with our current food system. And uh, so consumers are demanding um, local foods. They they want they want to know their farmers. They want to know where their food is coming from. They want to know how it's produced. Uh, and so that's what this is all about. And um, so the, the task force did their work. Right. And we, and what's happening this week? Uh, well, we've been meeting since January of 2008. Mm -hmm. We just finished our report, our strategic plan. And on Wednesday, March 4th, in Springfield, we're having a press conference where we are releasing the report to the public and Julie is writing a second piece of legislation that will reflect the recommendations of our report and those recommendations will hopefully put in place the mechanisms to support all sorts of um, small enterprises, small independent enterprises, uh, small farmers, medium-sized farmers, large farmers, but any any um, in Illinois enterprises who want to respond to the consumer demand by producing food, processing food in ways that Illinois consumers really want it. Um, so, um, you know, we're very excited, but the work is just beginning. Sure. Uh, yes, we had a revolution in November, but Obama also said the work is just beginning. Yeah. So what, um, it, when you look at, because you've been at this for so long and you do know the, the subject matter inside and out, um, and I know that there was talk the last time you were on the show about the talking farm. Um, do you want to catch us up on where that stands? I'd love it. And it's, uh, uh, yes, this First is. we should tell people what it is. Yes, the, the, talking, ta farm. the talking farm, uh, which I, it, it, there's a tagline that goes with it. The talking farm, the farm with something to say, is an urban farm that we're creating in Evanston. Um, and we've been at it for two years. We're a nonprofit. We have a board of directors. We've been doing educational programs. Uh, we envisioned a two to three acre full production farm uh, in, 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 in Evanston, in the Evanston area, um, to produce as much food as we can to, for sale to the general public and also have an educational component. We are in negotiation for that land. Uh, it's, it's along the North Shore Channel owned by the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, um, and uh, Evanston is taking out the lease. The, it's technically in the city limits of Skokie, so so getting all these three bureaucracies is, you know, everybody's on board, it's happening, it's just we're, we're going through the channels. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, this last year in 2008, we had a 4,000 um, mini farm where we, we grew diversified crops, had 150 volunteers involved, we sold to local cafes, uh, and it was just a tremendous community project. Mm. Uh, coming out of that, we are we are repeating that this year because we still are in negotiation for the larger parcel. Right. We have written two grants with Evanston Township High School, and we have a project there called the Edible Acre at Evanston High School. And Evanston has uh, committed an acre of land to create a, a farm, uh, and most of the energy around this at the high school is coming through vocational training because the high school recognizes that um, college should not be a default option for, st for, for young people. Um, yes, liberal arts colleges are fine, but many people want to do more hands-on work immediately. They, they know they want to work with their hands or they know wanna, they want to be involved with the earth. Uh, or go into a trade, and the, the high school is committed to figuring out ways to to help those students to follow their dreams, and so... And that's Evanston? Evanston High School.